We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretch before us now. The bridge dwellers had finally decided to believe that we were not demons and let us pass. Anna was right. We invaded their world, and it's not up to us to destroy it, no matter how stupid it may seem. Electricity is a sin. Is that really worse than the lies we were told in the metro about how the whole world was dead and there was nowhere to go? Everybody in the tunnels bought that convenient lie. Once we reach Yamantau, we will at least know if that lie was justified. Since so far, we haven't met any signs of enemy occupation. Artyom. Artyom. Wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the breach. See you later. Come on, wake up. You did a great job there. We are not home anymore, so we'd all better act like you did. Smoothly. It's not like there's many of us humans left now. So I hope someday we will be able to trust others just because. Because they are people too. Am I bothering you? Sorry, I'm in a philosophical mood today. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? A home, for one. A place where we could live. A log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know. There's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. You know, I had a talk with Katya. I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years. And they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They are just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are, essentially, slaves. For real. They work all day and pray all night, always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Everything is decided by the community. Well, I mean, Silantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity. Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance, exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? <sighs> people in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't they? As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar. Take us, in Metro. All right, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. 
If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. Damn, am I angry. And so far, no matter how far we get, we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But Father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant, be careful, the enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father. A whole lot, no matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is, once we get to Yamantau. <sighs> well... What do you know? I do feel better now, after telling you. Thanks for hearing me out, Artyom. Let's just sit here a little. Alright, run along. Dad wanted something. has rescued his princess from a monster-infested dungeon and is taking her to his magic kingdom where they are going to live happily ever after. Do you think we're going to find that kingdom in the end? Though, if it's with you, I'll be fine anywhere. <coughs> live happily ever after is the most important part as far as I'm concerned. Leaving already? Well, go get them, tiger.
we been on the road for? I've been listening to the radio, too. And there was not a single transmission about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. So many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here... This is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here, or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember? Neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like Middle Ages. That Salentius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years. Fighting each other. And nobody even thought you could live outside. Uncle Artyom! Uncle Artyom! Uncle Tokarev has already set his shop up! Wanna go look? It's so cool! Here, Uncle Artyom! kind of guys. You, the colonel, Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. And now he's bragging about it like a child. He's a child, really. No, a child. But he's good. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Ah, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay that debt back, okay? So, how do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Sure thing, so much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. Phew. Though you guys are gonna see the government, so, Bratuha, don't be mad, but just tell me. What the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's long since gone to shit. So what for, really? I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you, that means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom... You seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. No 
most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this, too. Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder it'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. And it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know? Well, Duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore, and he jokes that he's lucky it's not the front one, or else his toes would be in danger. <sighs> Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Uncle Tokarev! Uncle Tokarev! <sighs> what would you like to ask, Nastya? Uncle Tokarev, do you have a sewing machine? No, I don't. But how are you going to fix the suits then? Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Whoa, cool! Can you teach me? I sure can, but later. I've got work to do. Will you let me fix Sam's rifle strap? Well, sure thing. Oh, but under supervision. Sam is so strict, you know. And Uncle Sam isn't strict at all. He's kind. <laughs> all right, look here. I'll show you once. Now we do this. Got that. Don't rush it here. I see. Stepan's putting on a live performance here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. Well, the maestro is about to impress you.
Thank you, Stepan. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sini used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here. Quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bombed to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there were lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course. General industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we could leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Skatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> <sighs> it kind of got so glum in here. Mm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! Thank you, Stepan. You play so well. Oh, stop it already! <laughs> well, what did you expect? <laughs> So, what's up with your plate carrier? Tokarev was mad. Ah, uh, it's a long story. Come on, out with it. Hey, Artyom, the well, colonel's waiting the for you on the bridge. I am on a beam, looking at Artyom, milling about below. Oh, you are so full of it. <laughs> Artyom did most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> that he did, uh, yeah. He did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. You asked me about the vest yourselves. All right, go on. So I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What does? How should I know? It's dark. Nobody around. But I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and let down. There was that shed down there. The roof was uh, kind of closed. Uh, uh, and what about the Tsar? 
О, блин, the царь was huge, scary as shit. And there was this rusty bolt, and my carrier got snagged on it. <laughs> well, you, Duke, are lucky you already have a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And what was next? Oh, <laughs> next. Next we jumped that old preacher of theirs. Well, Artem did most of it. <laughs> he swooped in like a hawk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's good. Well, I was clamoring about those beams and fighting the Tsar. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself! <laughs> well, he basically solved the whole problem. True that. Good job, Artyom. Yeah, you both did well. Crest also. <laughs> <laughs> sure. He did a swell job distracting those guards. I almost wet my pants with laughter when they started hauling that timber. <laughs> he's an artist. Yeah, he's a great guy. He all came out on top of the game. And that calls for what? A trick. You nailed it. You truly are one of us now, Sam. <laughs> Will you be joining us? Ah, uh, not now. I'll have some at dinner. Well, you'll have to catch up then. Sure thing. Anyways, we will just have a little as a warm-up now. <laughs> Great! Ah, that's some good stuff. Guys, there's something I've been thinking about. What does everyone expect of this trip? Personally, I want to come back and tell Sveta of my adventures. So that she'd look at me with her huge gray eyes without blinking and keep saying, You're such a hero, darling. <laughs> so you're expecting heroics and scars. That works. And why did you come? Well, my heart is aching for true romance. But in the Metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. Not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katya came aboard, Stepan started cooing around her like a peacock. <laughs> you should be happy. Katya is a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. <laughs> that is unlikely. I'm not the kind of man to upstage his friend in a contest for a lady. Especially when that friend promises to break my arm. <laughs> I'll catch my stroke of luck soon enough. There in Yamantau, women from all over the country have already gathered, waiting for yours truly. <laughs> How about you, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel, but even then I thought, this is my chance to make my dream come true. A chance to see Kazakhstan, my people. But first, we must come back to Moscow, because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. What do you think about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> Weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. <laughs> Chekhov, too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, Sam, my friend. <laughs> sure. I read the book, too. 
It's just that I mix him up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz, a wounded officer. Powerful imagery. <laughs> you are just killing me. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sam? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again. Spark a joint up on a beach. <laughs> Catch that wave. Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller, there's still a relaxed Californian inside me. Ah, get out of here! <laughs> so you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was, and sent me to college once I was discharged. I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow, so do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean, and there, find a ship maybe? Oh yeah, just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like... Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. At least don't put your Ushanka on. They will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't. Though I will take my balalaika with me. <laughs> balalaika. <laughs> well... Who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? Well, your expectations, Elyosh, are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling the red carpet? Yeah, I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well, uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example, if there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay underground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years on the ground? Huh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah, we will have to live and see. You are right. Let me pass, please, Artyom. Hey, Artyom, could you let me through here? Here's one of my favorites. Hey, Artyom, let me sneak past you. Need a warm up, huh? Well, by all means, be my guest. I've been thinking here. Yes. How did Simantius manage to fool people so quickly? So dark. Charisma? Animal magnetism? Something in that fate of heat? It is a well known phenomenon, actually. Soon as hard times here. People's ability to be rationally shut down. When there's danger, or lack of food, an animal wakes up inside any homo sapiens. That animal, usually safely dormant, rears its head again. 
appreciated by the powers that be. As soon as democracy seems to be winning in a way that they don't like, well, they start a war. War, go witch hunting. If you make people feel threatened, they immediately go looking for strong leader. They're even ready to eat less, only to alleviate the threat. You think Salantius, if he not introduced that state of his, would have stayed in power for long? Of course not. Power needs ideology. They are essentially the same thing. And usually, people don't even want to figure things out. <laughs> they just want to get rid of anxiety, born from the complete and utter purposelessness of their existence. They also want an easily understandable goal, which they could single-mindedly pursue all their lives to take their minds off thoughts and unimpending death. Taking into account the number of priority targets there. So we can hope for smooth sailing from here and right to the very destination. It 
It's not even that far, but our speed depends on the state of the track. So I think it's going to take us quite some time to get there. So, Yermak, where were we? You are saying it's all about the results. Ah, yes. These soft-bellied attitudes must stop. The ends do justify the means. Well, I don't object. But not all ends can be called just. Exactly. And this is why... Why I have been waiting for a chance like this for ages. And now everything seems to be coming together. It's the government. Don't you understand? Oh, but of course. Hmm. You don't seem to quite grasp the importance. Which is unexpected. Especially after the news you just heard. Yes, well, say there is a government. So what? We spent so many years apart, so why worry now? Ah, but don't you see? They probably knew nothing about us. With the sheer power of enemy strikes directed at Moscow, they never expected so many of us to survive. And now, now we, we get to, get to tell them Moscow still lives. And not only that, it also preserved a functioning civilization! Do you get that? All these years, we were fighting a losing battle for mere survival! And now... and now we have a new goal! And what would that goal be? You don't get this, do you? The command center should have all of the command and control networks! All the intelligence! They should know where all the nukes hit, have complete fallout maps. They have everything. Information rules the world. And Metro is chock full of people. Put two and two together, we could repopulate the country. And of course not at once. First, we might have to take the country back. But we'll be doing this under the direction of a real government. People with all the necessary skills. And in the end, we will break out of the underground dead end we are in. Uh, it would be nice, sure. By the way, I meant to ask for some time now. How did you learn about the Yamantau bunker, Colonel? Oh, the information about the ARC project I have is beyond a doubt. I'm saying this as a GRU officer. I had colleagues working there, preparing evacuation plans. So I've been briefed into it officially. So, now we just have to get there. And we will. We will. The journey won't be easy, though. <laughs> we were never looking for an easy way. Yes. I've been thinking about that for a long time. The Central Industrial District, a priority target. Gatia did confirm my suspicions. The tracks might have survived partially, but the state they're in now is most likely terrible. I think we'll have to fix sections of the track. I think our people can handle it. Besides, I'm sure there will be side tracks. What do you think could have happened in the relatively intact territories in the meantime? That's a good question. Well... We are going to learn it pretty soon. Yes. Yes, that, that we will. Hmm, 
A shame. Have we got oil at least? Don't sure. We'll enough to get to Vladivostok if need be. <laughs> well, I doubt we have to go that far. But at least something is in abundance. The pipes? As I have told you already, it's high time for an overhaul. Christ and I did our best to removing the line buildup, but... Uh... Well, we just can't afford that. Are you finished with all the checks? Looks like it. But uh, let's have another go, just in case. Sure. We need to get a little more stuff if need be. Well, I doubt we have to go that far. But at least something is in the room. There was another. How did it go? Ha! Here goes! So, what was it? The Colonel is always right, and we're just filling our heads with dumb ideas. Do you think that when we come back to Metro, they will believe us? They, who live there, bury their folks there, feed their children with rat meat. Uh, all right, I'll stop going on. I agree with Father when he says it was the only way to preserve civilization. But what do you think they will find easier to believe? That they'd be able to get out to the surface and live there like they once did? Or that they'd spent 20 years underground for nothing. Just because secrecy demanded they stay there. Just because they didn't have the fucking security clearance? I simply don't know, Artyom. I only know that even if we ever go back there, and it's a big if, I'm definitely not staying. My home is here. Somewhere, on the surface. I just don't know where yet. And thank you, Artyom. No matter what Dad says, thank you for leading us outside. I'm sorry. Time to go. Okay, let me get up. Here's one of my favorites. The job of macrophage is to fight threats. 
but that's what we did back home. And when we fight, from the locals' point of view, we strangers are such a threat. And shouldn't be surprised when we catch the attention of their macrophages. I might be overthinking this, of course. Sometimes, the simplest solution really is the best. Sometimes. So, anyway, next time, of course, do your thing. But remember that I warned you. <laughs> Yes, we have fixed it. 